looking forward, I'm already itching to try and implement online into this. Because honestly, I have no idea how hard of a task that will be. Oh man, developing a game is hard, but developing for online is on another level. Hey everyone! If you missed it, I am creating a virtual tabletop to play Dungeons & Dragons with a first-person perspective, like uh, Roll20 meets Skyrim. And as a meta for this devlog, I wanted to implement a basic online functionality, but I had never done it before, so I had a lot to learn. As always, I started by going online and searching for Implementing Online in Unity. And after cruising around a couple of results, I found this, the Photon Network. In its own page, it says the following. We make multiplayer easy. And hey, that's exactly what I was looking for. But before going into it, let me explain how I wanted my online functionality to work. Step 1, and this is what I prototyped in my last devlog, the DM would create and prepare a map for his players, much like creating an encounter in Roll20, but using 3D models instead of images. Step 2, the players would connect to the DM, and during the connection step, they would download the maps with the 3D models to their computer automatically, leading us to the final step, where they all play together in the created map, the DM flying around and controlling the 3D models with his god mode controller, and the players controlling the characters in first person. It seemed like a straightforward plan that wasn't that hard to implement. And with the plan in mind, I got to work on understanding exactly how Photon works. So I created a free account and set up a server for my application, and here is where I found the first limitation of Photon. With the free membership, I can only have up to 20 people connected to the application at the same time. In the future, that could be problematic, but for now, in this early stage of development, that's fine. With the server up, I then imported Photon into my project, and with the help of a YouTube tutorial, did the setup necessary to connect my local project to the Photon server. This being done meant that technically my application could now be played online. I just needed to actually code the online functionalities into the game. So I started by creating a new scene where you're connected to the server and in here you could choose to host or join a room by inputting its name. I decided here that the player that was supposed to host was the DM because it was what made most sense since the DM is the player that has the maps in their computer. Now remember the problem I told you on the last devlog, here is the problem. Online developing needs two versions of the same application to be running at the same time to be able to be tested. This means that I need to create a build of my game if I want to test the online implementation. So I created a build to see if the connection step was working and well, as soon as I tried to create one, Unity gave me this error. It wouldn't let me create a build because it found my script where I depended on the editor functionalities for it to work. This meant I had to fix that issue if I wanted to test the online functionality. So I did a quick search on how to fix my 3D model importer issue and after a couple of potential solutions, I decided to try and see see if there was a runtime 3D model importer in the asset store. And holy crap, of course there was. My number one tip never fails me. This would basically solve my problem automatically. So I imported it in, quickly learned how it worked and was able to fix this issue by simply switching a couple of lines of code. It was working the same as before, super satisfying. But this also meant I had to go back and update the way the save system and the load system worked. There. Problem solved. As you can see, previous devlog situations will probably keep coming up. So if you want to stay on top of every development, please consider subscribing. Okay, back to the online. I could now test the online connection I set up before. As you can see, the online starts by connecting you to the server, and then you have the choice of choosing if you're a DM or a player. And so you create your room and... Uh, uh, uh. Welcome to online development. Everything takes super long to test because you always need to wait for a build to be done. And well, it's kind of tiring doing that only to find out you have an error. But well, I got right back into the code, found the error after like half an hour, and thankfully it was working afterwards. Now look at this! Whoa! That looks exactly like what I showed before. So what's the difference? Well, the difference was that this was being done supposedly online, but most importantly on a build. This meant I could send the build to you and you could use the application without the need of downloading Unity. So online working and implemented, right? Well, no. The connection is made, but everything else is still missing. To be brief, the base of step two was done. The connection was established between players. So now we needed to do the following. We would need to implement a non 
online player. This online player would have two versions, one using our DM controller and the other the player controller. And we would also need to implement a way to transfer the map from the DM to the players. And we'll get there when we get there. First, I decided to focus on the player. I started by updating the way the player moves, because it felt that the player was floating way too fast above ground and he was also missing his jump, so I wanted to change that. There, much better. Then I created something I called the game manager to handle the different player types. The functionality wasn't that hard. Basically, for the DM, I created this game object, called DM Abilities, that contained every ability I coded before for the DM. And for the player, I created player abilities, that contained basically the player controller. The game manager, at the time of connection, would mark you as a DM or player, depending on if you hosted or joined. And then, it would simply activate one or the other. Now, I wanted to actually be able to see the online players being controlled. I quickly found out that to do that, I simply needed to add this function called Photon Instantiate. And here, I learned something that will come handy for you to understand. In online game development, we need to make a distinction between spawning game objects locally and on the server. When looking at the local side, we have basically the game that is running on your computer. If the game spawns an object locally on your game, it won't appear on the games of the people you are connected with. For them, it's like they're not there. So, how do we make these objects appear on their games? Let's look at how things work on the server side. If you want to spawn an object in every game connected to the server, we simply tell the server, hey, spawn this object for me. In this case, through the use of Photon Instantiate, and it will appear on every game. This is very handy, because we can create a distinction between objects that can or cannot be spawned locally in order to minimize resources spent on the server. Back to development. So, once again, I created the build, created the room, joined that room, and my player was sent flying away from the map. What? And here I understood another important factor when developing for online. And that is... Authority. The problem is, imagine the server spawned two players. You now have two players in your game, and each player has the move script I created. How does the local game know which one you are, and which player movement you should be affecting and not? That's what authority is for. You need to inform the server of what you are in control of. Because if you don't, well, your player might go flying off the map. Because your controller ends up being affected by the other players connected to your game. You can probably imagine how messy this would become with just a handful of players walking around. So, in addition to coming up with the code for your scripts, when developing for online, you also need to be very careful and assign authority to the parts that may affect the other players that are connected online. And well, this can be quite hard to understand when starting. It was for me. But how does one do this? In Photon, it is actually quite simple. It is through the use of this simple line that checks if the view is yours or not. The difficulty was finding where I needed to add the damn line. And well, after that headache, thankfully I was able to achieve this beauty. And oh god, how good it felt to see two green pins walking around the map. I then simply implemented the differentiation between the DM and the player, and it was working. This meant that the spawning of players was done. Now we were only missing one thing. The map. I thought I could achieve this by simply spawning the 3D model using the server, much like I did the player, but I quickly understood this wouldn't work. As can be seen here, it was simply spawning an empty object. And so, since this was becoming exceptionally harder and harder to understand in my mind, I decided to go back to the drawing board and figure out how this was going to work in MS Paint. First, we have the DM part of the equation. The DM creates the map and saves it. During the save, the application will create a new text file with the name of the 3D models used in the map. Then, when online, the DM simply loads the map, leading us to the server part. Through the use of that file, the server will spawn an empty game object for each 3D model name in that file. And that's all it has to do, finally. Locally on all games, inside each object that the server spawned, we would spawn the 3D models as simply the visual for that server spawned object. I hope that wasn't as hard for you to understand as it was for me to find a way to explain. The big problem here was that this final step meant that every player needed to have the 3D models in their computer. So there had to be a place online where the DM could store his maps and at the time of connection the players would download the 3D models necessary for that map, leading me to the search of an online storage server that could do this. I began by asking the Photon forums then the Unity forums. While waiting for an answer, I searched and searched Google Drive, Amazon Web Services, Firebase Storage, a lot of names, a lot of services, but no real solution that could be implemented reasonably. Was this my first real roadblock? I could not find a solution for this problem, and after a couple of days of searching, I gave up because I came to a conclusion. Why the hell am I trying to find and implement 
a server database at such an early point in development. I am actually losing time I could be spending developing the application just because I want to automate this step, when this step could be easily handled by the DMs themselves before their sessions. How? By sending their safe files and 3D models through a website like WeTransfer or Google Drive. I mean, it's simple, and for now I feel that I can offload that effort to the players themselves. But if you have any idea of how I could accomplish this automatically, please write it down in the comments below, because I would love to hear some more ideas. Since development time for this devlog was already stretching itself, I decided to call it quits for the time being, and I'll focus on implementing this functionality using the idea that the DM sends his safe folder to his players before the session as the base for development of the next devlog. And I hope I have something more palpable to show you next time. But hey, I was able to create a connection and actually have two players walking around the scene at the same time. So progress is progress. I hope you enjoyed watching the video and if you did, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to follow along. Thanks for watching and see you next time for another devlog of this The Metas Project.